So I started a poll asking whether you want to see Yoshi or Waluigi and after 20,000 votes you guys said Yoshi and I'm finally delivering. So here goes. <laughs> The year is 1991, and you boot up your brand new Super Nintendo Entertainment System because Sega sucks, am I right? Hell no, man. What the f you got Super Mario World bundled along with the console, and you jump right into these 16-bit levels with breathtaking new graphics. You hit this block on your path and- Oh my god, what is that? Is that a dinosaur? You can ride the dinosaur? Oh wait, no, don't die. Yoshi pretty much turned the Super Mario gameplay on its head with his addition. But how did Nintendo come up with this idea? How did this spark a whole other successful franchise? And what the heck is a Yoshi anyway? Is it a dinosaur? Is it a turtle? Is it a dragon? I'm the Mentok and welcome to the Origin Oracle series. Grab a snack, kick back, and let's head back in time. Yoshi made his debut in the goaded Super Mario World, the best-selling Super Nintendo game of all time. Though a copy of this game was bundled with every Super Nintendo console, so Nintendo kinda cheated. But the story begins with Mario, Luigi, and the princess heading off to Dinosaur Land for a vacation. The instructions booklet mentions they needed to recuperate from their adventures. Funny enough, reading this takes me back to when Sonic tried to take a vacation too, only to have a mutated ancient being turned god lay waste to an entire city in front of his eyes. Sorry guys, there are no days off. So while Mario and Luigi are chilling at the beach, Bowser's minions scoop up the princess and during their search for her, they come across an egg. The egg hatches to reveal a young dinosaur named Yoshi, who reveals that he and his brethren were all sealed in eggs by the Koopa tribe. And so begins their journey to save the Yoshis of Dinosaur Land and free the princess from the grasp of Bowser once again. <laughs> All of these details were in the instructions booklet, even the moment where Mario gets his cape power up. It's actually a magical item given to him by Yoshi. So thanks Yoshi, you're the best. Yahoo! There's not much more to this story, but I find it interesting that what's written in the instructions booklet is slightly different in what we see in game. Unfortunately, there's no beach for Mario to relax on. The game opens with Mario setting off to rescue the princess, and your first stop on the world map is Yoshi's house. I totally thought this was Yoshi's alarm system when I was a kid, by the way. So Yoshi leaves a message behind to say that he went on a journey to save his friends. And so Mario sets off and then would release Yoshi from the egg Bowser trapped him in. All that aside, you now have one of the most versatile, should I say, power-ups in the game, giving you the ability to eat almost any enemy, spit up Koopa shells at obstacles and other enemies, sacrifice Yoshi for the greater good, what was that last one? use Koopa shells to shoot fireballs, stomp, and fly. Oh yeah, and there's also the feature where you feed Yoshi enough fruits, he'll poop out an egg with a power-up inside. I always thought it was cool that as long as you have Yoshi at the end of the level, you can move on to the next one with him, no questions asked. Unless it's a castle or a ghost house, of course. And I gotta take a second to mention the bongos that come in anytime you're on Yoshi's back. This is such a nice detail and they added it to every single level that you're capable of using Yoshi in. The bongos just add that razzle dazzle, you know? So with all these creative gameplay enhancements surrounding Yoshi, how did Nintendo come up with him in the first place? Well, Yoshi is another idea from Shigeru Miyamoto, Super Mario World being one of the very first games designed for the Super Nintendo. 16 people made this game in three years, which goes to show how far games have come with the current size of development teams these days. Miyamoto always wanted Mario to ride a horse as far back as the release of the original Super Mario Bros. Though riding a horse would have been way too difficult with the technical limitations of the Nintendo Entertainment System, but the power of the Super Nintendo allowed them to do just that. And since the setting would be in Dinosaur Land, they decided to go with the dinosaur as Mario's trusted steed. The influence for Yoshi may even go back as far as 1984 from a character called Tamagon. This was a green dragon creature who starred in an arcade-like game called Devil World for the NES, the very first NES game created by Miyamoto and Tezuka. Tamagon also hatches from eggs and has the ability to eat enemies. Oh, and does this noise sound familiar? Cool. Yoshi was created by Shigefumi Hino, a graphics designer on the team, alongside Takashi Tezuka, longtime veteran director and game designer of the Super Mario series. I think Tezuka doesn't get as much credit he deserves for his contributions to many well-established Nintendo series like Super Mario and Zelda. This is a silly example, but Boos were actually inspired by Tezuka's wife, who is a mostly shy person but got angry at him one time for spending too much time at work. And I have to wonder if she knows about this. Thank you. 
Anyway, the name Yoshi is similar to the Japanese saying Yosh, meaning all right. Yoshi's name was also a combination of one of their staff members, Mie Yoshimura, and Nessie, the nickname for the Loch Ness Monster. These are some of the early sprites for Yoshi, and I'm actually very happy with what we got instead. Initially, the designs would be more reptilian in nature since Nintendo tried to zero in on the whole dinosaur land theme, but Tezuka and Hino felt it wouldn't fit the Mario universe and redesigned Yoshi. Yoichi Kotabe, the lead artist of the Mario series, would also contribute to the final design, and according to him, a chameleon he'd sketched earlier may have been the inspiration of Yoshi's long tongue. Tezuka and Hino also attempted to make Yoshi somewhat related to the Koopas, using a shell as his saddle. So you're probably wondering, what is Yoshi exactly then? Is he a dinosaur, a dragon, or some kind of Koopa? Okay, so this might be a little confusing, but here goes. In the manual of Super Mario World in the West, he's referred to as a dinosaur, and the fact that he's an inhabitant of dinosaur land, it would be correct to refer to him that way, initially. The Japanese manual, on the other hand, refers to Yoshi as a dragon. So to go along with this, the message Yoshi leaves behind at his house in the Japanese version of Super Mario World has his name assigned as Super Dragon Yoshi. So several Japanese guidebooks and manuals would continue to refer to Yoshi as a dragon, while Western guidebooks, and the movie, refer to him as a dinosaur. So where does the Koopa part come in? Takashi Tezuka has made some commentary multiple times that Yoshi was originally supposed to be a species of Koopa. Then in 2016, there was a bio posted on the Nintendo Japanese site saying, even though there's a shell on his back, we actually don't know whether Yoshi's a dinosaur or a turtle or you guys just can't make up your minds. Interestingly enough, they refer to him here as a dinosaur and not a dragon. To add to the confusion, Tezuka would also be asked a similar question in a 2019 interview around the release of Yoshi's Crafted World, stating, yes, I always had to insist he was a turtle. Because we wanted a character that wouldn't feel out of place in the Mario universe, we decided on a turtle. It might have been Miyamoto's idea, but I'm not entirely sure. The interviewer goes on to ask about the message in Super Mario World that was signed Super Dragon, to which Tezuka says, I think we wrote that without really thinking about it too much. <laughs> so let that be a lesson to all of us. I try to make sense of things within this franchise to the best of my ability, but at the end of the day, Nintendo isn't losing sleep over the finer details. But if you need me to take a stance on this, I'm going with the idea that Yoshis are a form of turtle that have dinosaur-like features. His appearance has shifted quite a bit over the years, so I wouldn't be surprised if some of these design changes were intentionally made to lean more into the turtle side. Even though Yoshi has proven to have the ability to lay eggs, most people often refer to him as male, myself included. But Miyamoto once said that he isn't sure if Yoshi is male or female. The Japanese text for Yoshi's trophy in Super Smash Bros. Melee states that Yoshis are neither male nor female. So to add to this, the chef minigame in Game & Watch Gallery 2 and 4 shows Yoshi giving birth to other Yoshis after he eats enough, so they don't even need a mate to reproduce. This even gets addressed by Snake and Otacon in Smash Bros. Brawl and Palutena in Smash 4. It lays eggs and throws them, right? Then it must be female. Well, actually, it's a he. At least, that's what it says. It talks. Well, all living beings contain both female and male elements. It appears that Yoshi is no different. So Nintendo, if they can reproduce all by themselves, what's the deal with Yoshi and Birdo over here? They've partnered up in multiple sports and spin-off games, and seeing we went down this road with Luigi and Daisy, I'm suspicious of their relationship. I wouldn't think too hard about this one, but in Mario Kart Double Dash, Birdo is Yoshi's partner, and the profile for Birdo on the Japanese website decided to have some fun with this. Appears to be Yoshi's girlfriend. Or is that boyfriend? By the way, I had no idea Birdo was simply named Catherine in Japan. Shout out to all the Catherines watching right now. Okay, so while we were talking about all of that, Mario defeated Bowser and saved the princess, rescuing all the Yoshi eggs in the process. With the day finally saved, they all head back to Yoshi's house and have an absolute rager. Yo, this Yo. is Princess! Super Mario World also had the bonus stages in the Star World where you could feed different color baby Yoshis until they grew to full size, and once they do, these Yoshis can be found within levels from that point on. When they have shells in their mouth, they have different abilities depending on their color. I had to mention this because the flying blue one was my favorite. After the success of Super Mario World, Yoshi would get a few spin-offs made by different developers contracted by Nintendo. The first was released in late 1991, a puzzle game known simply as Yoshi. Cause here comes Yoshi, and he's up against Goombas, Bloobers, Boobuddies, and Piranha Plants in Nintendo's new stack and sandwich puzzle game called Yoshi. 
It was also called Mario and Yoshi in other regions, and Yoshi's Egg in Japan. Yoshi is a simple falling block game that requires the player to match Yoshi eggshells as they drop into four different columns. Mario is here doing most of the work, of course, and while he's trying to get the eggshells together, you have to match enemies that are also falling to eliminate them from the columns before it stacks too high. This game, believe it or not, was crucial in the history of Nintendo, since it was the very first collaboration between them and Game Freak. Yes, the creators of Pokemon had their humble Nintendo beginnings on this very project, using it as a stepping stone to get the proper financial backing to work on a larger scale project that would eventually be the very first Pokemon game. Yoshi sold 500,000 copies in Japan on its first day of sale, and in the US topped the NES sales charts for two months, which for the early 90s is some pretty decent numbers. The second spin-off was Yoshi's Cookie, a Tetris-like puzzle game that was developed for the NES, Game Boy, and Super Nintendo. This game has the player matching sets of cookies until the board is fully clear. There's not much more to it, but I have to point out that Mario can literally do anything. Need cookies made from Yoshi's milk organized? What? Mario's got you. Need cakes packaged and sent for delivery? He's got you on that too. Need a building wrecked for your new condo? Call or text Super Mario Bros Plumbing today! Now in 1993, there was also a first person shooter called Yoshi's Safari for the Super Nintendo. Mario and Yoshi were finally tired of Bowser sh so you can join them on a quest with your super scope. Remember this thing? There's no getting around it. They really have Mario all strapped up in this first cutscene. Look at this. In all seriousness, Bowser kidnaps King Fret and Prince Pine from a nearby kingdom called Jewelry Land. So Princess Peach does wartime princess things and sends Mario and Yoshi to go aid their kingdom and save the king and prince. So you use the super scope to shoot at incoming enemies from the perspective of Mario, who is on Yoshi's back. Safari would not be my choice of words to describe what's happening here. It's called Yoshi's Road Hunting in Japan, by the way, which I guess could be a literal definition of the word Safari. It's still a stretch to me. This game released around the time where Mortal Kombat was in the spotlight due to its violent nature. And in fact, some articles credit the controversy surrounding the violence being watered down for the Super Nintendo version of Mortal Kombat being one of the reasons behind this game getting so little attention. I would also put this on the super scope for not reaching too many households at the time. So these three spin-offs were the beginning of the Yoshi franchise, in more ways than one. From the moment Super Mario World was being developed, Miyamoto thought of making a game starring Yoshi. He's outwardly said that he disliked the three Yoshi games that were developed and wanted to make one that fit the Yoshi character instead. So he would once again join Takashi Tezuka and Shigefumi Hino on the next project. Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island, released for the Super Nintendo in the fall of 1995. Now, I've covered this game several times since it serves as an origin story for Mario, Luigi, and Bowser, but the focus here is definitely the Yoshi tribe. The game opens with baby Mario and baby Luigi on their way to their parents via the stork before Kamek swoops in attempting to kidnap the brothers before they become a problem for Bowser in the future. Baby Mario is dropped during the scuffle and falls down towards Yoshi's Island where he's picked up by Yoshi. So Yoshi and his team decide to use a relay system to get Mario back to his brother and save Luigi from the clutches of Bowser and Kamek. The gameplay definitely shares many elements from the 2D Mario formula at the time, but Miyamoto wanted to develop a game that was more accessible and relaxed. They removed time limits and came up with the ideas for Yoshi's prolonged flutter jump, which made platforming a much easier task in comparison to previous Mario games. The unique art style itself was a result of Nintendo wanting to incorporate a wildly different approach than previous titles, since Donkey Kong Country set the new standard with its computer-generated graphics. In an interview with Hisashi Nogami, who was a character designer on the project at the time, he states that the team had to hand-draw the characters on paper, which would then be scanned and recreated pixel by pixel to create the sprites that we saw in the final product. Nogami, by the way, would go on to be one of the lead producers for the Splatoon series, by the way. Anyway, Yoshi's Island would become an instant Nintendo classic, standing on its own as the beginning of a new series. It proceeded to spawn several Yoshi games with similar mechanics like Yoshi's Story, Yoshi's Island DS, New Yoshi's Island, Yoshi's Woolly World, and Yoshi's Crafted World. I know that's not all of them, but these are probably the most important. How come you don't want me, man? Yoshi's Story was the Nintendo 64 follow-up to Yoshi's Island, with Miyamoto stepping away from the project and Takashi Tezuka returning as the producer for the title. This time, the Yoshis would stand on their own against Kamek and Baby Bowser, with the plot taking place within a pop-up book 
once again going for a unique aesthetic that the first game was famous for. I bring this game up mainly because it's the first time we would hear Yoshi's current voice. The genius behind his voice is Kazumi Totaka, one of Nintendo's veteran composers responsible for titles like Super Mario Land 2, Luigi's Mansion, and the Animal Crossing series. I tried to see if I could find Totaka pulling off Yoshi sounds in the booth and came across this video, so I'll ruin Yoshi for all of you as well. I never asked for this. Before I move on, I wanted to address a commonly asked question. Is there one main Yoshi or does Mario interact with different Yoshis each time? What about the green Yoshi from Yoshi's Island? Is this the same Yoshi that Mario would later save on Dinosaur Island in Super Mario World? Well, to explain this, I'm going to have to say Yoshi a lot, so bear with me. So the answer to this question isn't written in stone, but the leading theory is that the original green Yoshi that saves baby Mario in Yoshi's Island is not the same green Yoshi we see in Super Mario World. Mario meets this Yoshi for the very first time during the events of the game, but it's assumed that this would be the main Yoshi we'd see in the mainline titles from that point on. So this Yoshi from Yoshi's Island is presumed to be just another green one from the past. This is further supported in the follow-up game to Yoshi's Island. Island, Yoshi's Island DS for the Nintendo DS. Bowser goes back in time to track down the seven star children in the past so he can use their collective powers to become the ruler of the world. So he starts kidnapping all the babies in the Mushroom Kingdom willy-nilly in hopes of finding the correct seven. This reunites Yoshi with baby Mario, who along with Peach, DK, Wario, Luigi, and baby Bowser make up six of the seven. Once they've stopped Bowser at the end of the game, a young baby green Yoshi is shown hatching from an egg, revealed to be the final star child. Many fans believe that this implied that this Yoshi would become the main Yoshi Mario encounters on his adventures later down the line. So I guess we could call this the origins of Yoshi? The main one? So this is the part of the script where I'm wondering if I confused everyone. So nothing fully confirms this, and I'm pretty sure this is another one of those details Nintendo isn't showing any concern over. It would be funny if every Yoshi we've ever encountered up to this point is just a random green one that happens to show up that day. But even if there are one or several green Yoshis, the popularity of the Yoshis as a whole can't be understated. In 2008, a popularity poll in Japan would have Yoshi ranked the third most popular character behind Mario and Cloud Strife. As recent as 2021, another poll in Japan by Line ranking the most popular Mario characters would have Yoshi come out on top as number one, above even Mario himself. So it's no wonder we'd also see Yoshi make appearances in a majority of Mario sports and spin-off titles. As for the mainline Yoshi series, Nintendo has been using it to go all out for different art styles. Yoshi's Woolly World for the Wii U and Yoshi's Crafted World for the Switch both take an innovative spin on Yoshi by featuring these gorgeous worlds in the style of yarn or something you'd see in an arts and crafts kindergarten class. These games keep the plot even simpler, but manage to integrate the art style into the gameplay of each game, making for a really feel-good co-op experience. As of December, Yoshi's Crafted World has sold around 3 million copies, making it a pretty successful game, so I have to wonder if we'll see Nintendo continue to use the Yoshi series as an art medium. But I wanted to take a look at Yoshi's origins in media outside of the games. An easy one to start with would be the Super Mario World animated series by Deke Entertainment that aired in the early 90s. Don't go away! Captain N and Super Mario Brothers World back soon! It was the follow-up to the Super Mario Super Show and Adventures of Super Mario Bros. 3. This motherfucker don't miss. Super Mario World only had 13 episodes, but it introduces Yoshi as one of the main characters of the show, joining the Mario Brothers and Princess Toadstool on their adventures in Dinosaur Land. The final episode of the series, Mama Luigi, covers the origins of Yoshi within this series, and I never thought the day would come where I had to pick apart this episode for a YouTube video. For those who don't know, this episode was a major source of memes and YouTube poops back on the early days of YouTube. Because YouTube is where they poo bits. <laughs> Anyway, the episode has Luigi telling Yoshi the story of how they met. The beginning of the tale is pretty close to the story of Super Mario World, with Mario, Luigi, and the princess taking a trip to Dinosaur Land, but King Koopa wasn't too far behind. His minions kidnap the princess, and during a fight with a fire sumo, Luigi falls deep into the caves of Dinosaur Land. It's here Luigi discovers Yoshi's egg within one of the blocks, but in this version of events, he hatches as a baby and mistakes Yoshi for his mother, hence... Mama? Mama Luigi? <laughs> 
Baby Yoshi here would then help the brothers save the princess by eating a load of King Koopa's men. But above all else, I'd say putting Luigi in the spotlight here as the one to discover Yoshi puts an interesting spin on the events of Super Mario World. Last but not least, we can't forget about the 1993 Super Mario Bros. movie. Now, as I've mentioned before, this movie will be getting its own video at some point, but Yoshi does make an appearance in here as well. The movie introduces the Mario brothers as plumbers from New York who in an attempt to save a kidnapped princess Daisy, end up in an alternate dimension called Dino Hatton. Yoshi is a pet of the royal family, or more specifically, King Koopa. You're a Go ahead and say it. <laughs> Dinosaur. <laughs> but he isn't treated so well by his master. We see Daisy grow compassion for the tiny dinosaur and they ultimately befriend each other. As unsettling as a realistic Yoshi may look, this was an animatronic designed by the team of Patrick Tatopoulos, who is a pretty renowned production designer that would go on to work on titles like Independence Day, Chronicles of Riddick, and the 300 films. Since Super Mario Bros. was being created at the same time as Jurassic Park, Tatopoulos wanted to make a cuter and less menacing dinosaur in Yoshi. This puppet had four different versions, one being a fully functional model that required 70 cables and 9 operators. They spent half a million US dollars on this thing, adjust for inflation and you're looking at a little over a million dollars today. I mean, in all honesty, it looks pretty good, but the fact that it's Yoshi is the part that always weirds me out, even when I first watched this movie back in the day. Now, I know there are a ton of other appearances from Yoshi that I miss, but of course, that's where the comments come in. Let me know your favorite Yoshi appearances, whether it be Yoster Island in Super Mario RPG or even the Yoshi kid from Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. I'll be back next time with the last character in the Mario roster before moving on to the next series. I'll be doing my research in another galaxy somewhere in the meantime. As always, everyone be safe. The Prophet has spoken.